so this is what I look like after literally like just waking up and today is a pretty good day like I haven't brushed my hair or anything I haven't even like done anything to my face at all I've literally just got out of bed went and had some breakfast cleaned my teeth and that is all I have done this morning so if you guys didn't already know, I actually wear glasses. I have this pair and then I've got another pair which are like a uh, kind of like black or brown frame, I guess. You've probably seen if you watch my vlog channel. And I also need to put some dry shampoo in my hair. So I am going to go and put my contact lenses in. I just use these to see so that I can not wear my glasses during the day because they just annoy me. Oh God. <laughs> Whoops. I'm also just going to use a bit of the Pixie Glow Tonic on my face just to get off any like excess oils and stuff. My face is about to go really red, just a warning, because it's so sensitive and as soon as I touch it, it just goes red. <laughs> you see what I mean? Well, that was a bit of a different intro. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different and I thought I would do a kind of like chatty, life update, get to know me style, get ready with me video. So I'm basically just gonna be sitting here doing my makeup and talking about some topics that you guys have asked me to talk about on Twitter because it came to my attention that I've got quite a few new subscribers since I last did a kind of personal style video and I want you guys to get to know me a bit better because I do quite a lot of that stuff over on my vlog channel. If you don't sub like, if you're not subscribed over there, it's just Soph Does Vlogs. Um, so I do like quite a lot of like chatty personal things on my that channel but on this channel I feel like you guys don't really know me that well and I thought it might help if you knew a bit more about me. Also as well if you follow me on Twitter you'll probably know a bit more about me because I feel like I share more of my personal life on there. Um, but yeah I thought it might be quite a good idea to just do like a super chilled chatty sit down video where I'm talking to you guys and doing my makeup at the same time so that's what I'm doing today. Also, I'd love to know something about you guys as well. I know it sounds super like cringy and cliche, but let me know something random about you down there in the comments because I don't know, I like chatting to you guys. I also, again, like I chat to you a lot on Twitter, but I feel like on YouTube, it's a bit more difficult to be like more interactive and personal with you guys, if that makes sense. Today's notification squad shout out goes to Lucy Lockett. And she says, I've had a long day. Soap uploading is a great way to unwind. And girl, your eyes looked amazing. OMG, love you loads. Thank you so much, Lucy. And thank you guys as always for all of your lovely comments you just always are so nice to me so thanks <laughs> okay right let's talk about some stuff <laughs> i need some lip balm by the way my favorite lip balm at the moment is this one um it's the tony moly mini peach lip balm it kind of looks like a boob just a little bit however this as you can probably see like i've nearly used it up i'm towards the bottom it smells incredible and is honestly one of the most moisturizing amazing lip balms I've ever used. Okay, so I'm gonna just start doing my face. If I forget to mention any of the products that I used, I'll link them all down below. Um, for my primer, I'm using the Body Shop Skin Defense Multi Protection Essence, which apparently has got SPF 50. I've never tried this before, so I thought I'd give it a go. So the first thing that I kind of want to address, just like kind of randomly, and nobody really asked me this like on Twitter, but I see so many comments all the time, people saying that they think I've had lip fillers. <laughs> Guys, I have not had lip fillers. Um, the majority of the time when my lips are looking bigger, it's because for a long time I had Invisalign, which is like a clear retainer, and it kind of like pushed my uh, lips out and made them look a bit more juicy, and also I was kind of wearing more gloss and overlining my lips a bit more. Um, but no, I have not had lip fillers. If I had, then there'd probably be a vlog about it on my second channel, and I would let you guys know, but... I haven't had anything like that done. I haven't had anything done. <laughs> Apart from my teeth, which are now straight and really white. <laughs> Ooh, that's a very lightweight kind of like SPF. I'm just using the Soap & Glory One Heck of a Blot Primer. Um, so another thing that loads of you guys asked on Twitter is a pretty lighthearted one, what my opinions are on Love Island. Um, yeah, if you follow me on Twitter and you don't watch Love Island, I'm really sorry because I tweet about it quite a lot, but Basically, at the moment, um, my favourites were, well, I obviously love Danny and Jack because they seem really cute together. I really did like uh, Georgia and Josh, but now Josh seems like he's kind of straying a bit, so I don't really know. And from the very beginning, I always thought that Wes was playing a game with Laura and everyone was like, no, they're so genuine. And I was kind of like, I'm not so sure about that. And now he's come out to be a bit of a snake, so... I feel like my gut, my gut feeling was right. <laughs> oh, my camera battery is flashing. I'll be right back. For my foundation, I'm using the 
Rimmel Match Perfection in the shade Fair Ivory, I think. Another question that one of you guys asked is what happened with uni? Um, basically, I have mentioned this on my channel kind of like before about how I did an art foundation year. I then did one year of graphic design at university. Um, basically, I decided after my first year that I was gonna drop out. It kind of got to the point where my YouTube channel started growing loads and I was trying to do it at the same time as university. Um, I then got offered kind of like halfway through my first actual degree year of graphic design. I got offered a job to work uh, like for Makeup Revolution and for their kind of like YouTube channel and their social channels and stuff like that um, and I kind of just thought to myself like I wasn't really enjoying uni I hadn't really made many friends because I felt like everyone was really really focused on graphic design and nobody really had any like similar interest as me I wasn't enjoying it that much um, I kind of felt like the actual like education I was getting wasn't that great and it wasn't worth like the nine thousand pounds a year fees um, and I kind of thought you know what at the moment I'm loving doing YouTube uh, I'm not gonna get like a job offer like this again basically and I kind of thought it seemed like it would be a bit silly to turn down the job offer to work for Makeup Revolution because like it's kind of like my dream job basically this is the Maybelline instant anti-age eraser um but yeah basically I had the intentions of applying for distance learning and finishing my degree from home but honestly like at the moment I've just been too busy to actually sign up for it um so you know the door is always open I can always go back to uni and finish my degree at the moment obviously I've been super super lucky um and I haven't needed a degree yet but if there is a stage in my life where you know I feel like I want to go back to university then I will and I can still do that I really like this concealer it definitely has been weird kind of staying at home while all of my friends have been off at uni they've now just like they were all just finished pretty much and like graduated. A couple of my friends are staying on to do masters, um, which obviously sucks for me because I'm back at home and then they're all like all over the country, but all of my friends have done so well and I'm so proud of them. And you know, I've still seen them when they've been back for holidays and stuff. So it's kind of been fine, like um, staying at home and not going to uni when all of my friends are at uni. Um, but I was never the type of person that really wanted to go to university. Like I was never desperate to go. Whereas a lot of my friends, they kind of like really, really wanted to. Whereas when I was like doing my A-levels, I wasn't really that keen to go and I didn't really feel like I was ready to go. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like that's another reason why it kind of like didn't really work out for me but my advice on that would be um if you want to go to uni that is really cool and like i'm sure you will have the most amazing time like my brother went to uni absolutely loved it like literally was living his best life all of my friends have loved university um but if you are the type of person where you feel like uni isn't just like for you then that is completely fine like you don't have to go but that being said i would definitely not um kind of think oh it's fine i can just start a youtube channel and that'll get me through life and i won't have to go to university like for me i was just incredibly lucky that i'd started my channel before i went to uni and then kind of like halfway through it started to grow a lot more to the point where it could kind of become my job but it's definitely not a sensible idea like from a kind of mum point of view um yeah like a youtube channel is not a way out of getting an education and getting a job if you get what i mean um i just got incredibly lucky i don't really know how it happened i did have plans to be a graphic designer and i was just incredibly lucky to get this opportunity so yeah it kind of worries me when i see a lot of kids being like oh it's fine i don't need to work hard on my gcse's i'm just going to start a youtube channel because the real the reality of it is not everybody's youtube channel is going to do well and not everybody is going to, you know, it's not going to be for everyone. Like, I think a lot of people don't realise that you actually have to put a lot of effort into it to actually get it to work. You can't just, like, you know, you don't just sit down for 10 minutes and then just upload it. Like, there's a lot that actually goes into it. And I would I would say, if you are trying to make a successful YouTube channel, um, just put as much work and effort into it as you can. Um, you know, upload as consistently as possible. Uh, and, yeah. I just, yeah, I don't really know what else to say on that, to be honest. A lot of you were asking if I could talk about mental health um, and kind of like anxiety and stuff like that. I'm gonna use the Balm Bahama Mama bronzer. Okay, so mental health and anxiety is something that I've spoken quite openly about on my second channel. I have spoken about it on this channel in like Q and A's before, um, but just in case you guys are new, to kind of cut a long story short, I had pretty bad anxiety which started at the age of seven after the london bombings 
um, which I know that this kind of got real dark, but just to kind of explain. Um, so then after then I developed death anxiety and I was scared of public transport and London in general and trains and taxis and buses and I wouldn't go on any of them. Then my anxiety kind of disappeared uh, throughout the ages of kind of like, uh, I guess 12 to about 16 and then it came back again. I don't really know what triggered it to come back. Again, I've posted an entire kind of story time video on my channel explaining everything about it. But um, yeah, it basically kind of got to the point again where I wasn't going on trains. I wasn't taking any form of public transport. Long story short, I was able to get some CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy through the NHS and that massively, massively helped me. Um, and honestly, like, I think it kind of changed my life along with YouTube and kind of like being motivated to go to London and stuff like that. Um, yeah, if you guys follow me now on social media, you'll see that I go to London a lot and I still have moments where, you know, like I feel super anxious and stuff, but it's, oh God, like literally I am a different person to who I was maybe like three years ago um, and I've overcome so much. So yeah, basically what helped me was cognitive behavioral therapy. I know that it doesn't work for everyone. I just got on really, really well with my therapist. He was incredible um, and it really worked for me, but I would just say like, keep trying different things until you find something that works for you. Um, keep going back to the doctors and just keep explaining, you know, that something didn't work um, and hopefully they'll be able to get you some more help. I'm using one of these new Barry M highlighters. I had a couple of people ask about Taylor Swift and what I thought of the concert. I thought the concert was amazing. It was incredible. I went both nights uh, at Wembley, uh, Wembley Stadium and I had a couple of people ask me like what was my anxiety like at, con at the concert because I hadn't been to a concert in like four years I think. The first night was completely fine. Like I was absolutely fine and I think the kind of excitement took over and then for some reason on the second night um I was kind of okay like up until about halfway through the concert um and then I actually had a panic attack and I haven't had one in probably about a year and I'm not really sure where it came from um I think because the day before we had been you know at the concert as well and dancing tons um I was absolutely exhausted. If you guys like dance loads at concerts, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and also we kind of went to the barrier bit um, where Taylor walks through the crowd to try and like uh, touch her hand as she walked past and like get a good view and stuff. And I was being really squished like into the barrier cause I was kind of right at the front. Um, and I didn't get to touch her hand cause I'm too short. My two friends did, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, then after that I was kind of feeling a little bit like cramped with people. We went back down to sit at our seats um, and my back was hurting so much I felt really faint um, because I think we'd been standing up the whole time and I felt really like physically exhausted. And so then I kind of felt like started feeling a bit sick and I decided that I was just gonna sit down for a bit and then suddenly I just had a panic attack and I don't really know, I guess it was just kind of like a build up of all of those different factors, but it was not fun. Um, I did stay in the concert because I didn't want to go outside because it's such a big stadium and I didn't want to like lose my friends. Um, and so I just sat down in my seat for a bit, um, had some water and was able to calm down. And then, you know, like a few songs later, I'd kind of like sat down and managed to calm down. And then I was able to get back on my feet and still enjoy the rest of the concert. So it really wasn't fun. And it really wasn't something that I wanted to happen at a Taylor Swift concert. Cause obviously like I love her. Um, and I did miss a couple of the songs, but like at the same time, like I was still so happy that I was actually able to enjoy the rest of the concert and like I still had a really, really good time. So hopefully that can kind of like, I don't know, help you guys out a bit if you're worried about going to a concert and like, basically what I'm trying to say is like, if that does happen to you, it doesn't mean that the concert's over and you have to go home. Um, I know that it's not the same situation for everyone, but like for me, I was actually able to kind of like calm down and still enjoy it anyway, so. Yeah. Another one of you guys asked me, she said, tell us what you do other than YouTube. You seem so cool to hang out with. Are you a going out out person or a chill out person? I live a pretty boring life. Okay, besides the YouTube life, obviously like I get to do some really cool things via YouTube, like going to cool events and stuff. Um, but the weird thing is, right? I kind of say this to my friends and like my family. I feel like I have this like, Soph does nails life. Um, and I kind of do feel like I'm two different people. Like 
I almost feel like I'm Hannah Montana, you know? Like, I have two different lives. Um, my Soph Does Nails life, like, I do cool things and I seem like I'm a pretty confident person and I kind of, when I'm speaking to people from brands and stuff, I go into, like, a different kind of side of my personality. Um, but then when I'm at home, like, most days, I really don't go out much. I spend most of my time kind of at home with my parents. I'm a very kind of like chilled person. I like staying in. I like going out to dinner. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. I'm not really that into clubbing. See, I never used to go out clubbing at all because of my anxiety. I didn't like being in that kind of like small situation. Um, and I didn't like seeing all of my friends get really drunk and yeah, I've spoken about that on my vlog channel as well, so I was never that big of a drinker, and so I never used to go out, but now that I've kind of like overcome my anxiety a lot, I've been out a couple of times recently visiting my friends at uni, and I have actually like kind of enjoyed it, like it was fun, um, but most of the time, to be honest, I would much rather just stay in, uh, get a takeaway, watch something on the TV, or like, you know, go out for dinner with my friends rather than or like go to a pub rather than actually going to a club because I just don't really like clubs in general. I really just appreciate time with my family and I really like seeing my parents and my brother. I see him occasionally. Some of you guys asked how he's doing, my brother Andrew. Um, he's been in some of my vlogs as well. I'm using the Revolution Chocolate Elixir Palette, which looks like this. Um, but yeah, it's really sad. Andrew doesn't live with us anymore because he's got a job and he's old now. Okay, he's not old. He's 22. He's a year and a half older than me. Um, I get on so well with my brother and I love him so much and obviously like I miss him loads when he's not at home. Um, but we do Skype him quite a lot and like we went to visit him recently, which was really nice. Um, so yeah, I just really like spending time with my family and just kind of like chilling maybe go into the park, maybe just like, you know, seeing my friends. And yesterday I saw some friends and we just kind of like sat in the garden and just ate food and had some drinks and it was really nice. So yeah, that's kind of like what I like to do with my time. I also watch a lot of like crime documentaries on YouTube. A couple of you also asked about driving and if I can drive and like tips on learning to drive and stuff. Um, yes, I can drive and I've been driving since I was, I passed my test like a couple of months before I turned 18. A couple of you as well asked how my driving went with having anxiety and stuff. Um, for me, it wasn't really an issue because my anxiety is more about things that I'm not in control of and kind of like death anxiety um, in situations that I kind of can't control. Um, driving, when I'm actually driving the car, I'm kind of fine with because I'm in control of the situation, if that makes sense. Um, and also I was lucky enough that Sam's dad is actually a driving instructor, so he taught me how to drive, so I didn't have like the scary experience of meeting a stranger. But what I would say is like all of my friends did that and they just kind of went off recommendations of other people that had learned to drive. And I feel like, you know, a lot of the time you're gonna be able to find a recommendation from somebody that you know, like a family or friend. And another thing I would say about driving is don't try and pass your test too quickly. I know that it's really like, you know, you really wanna pass and wanna be able to learn to drive, but if you don't pass your test within a couple of months, don't worry. I was learning to drive for 11 months before I passed my test. Um, and now I would say that I'm a pretty good driver. Um, I passed my test first time with two minors, which is pretty cool. I tried not to treat it like a race between my friends. It definitely made me a more confident driver having, um, you know, a longer amount of time to actually learn to drive. However, I don't actually have a car. I've never had my own car. A lot of my friends, when they were like 17, they got cars for their birthday or like they saved up and bought a first car, but like I've still never had my own car. At the moment I'm sharing with my mum, but hopefully soon I'm gonna be getting my first car. I've been like looking at a lot of like secondhand ones online and stuff and I'm hoping that I'll get one soon. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm using the Revolution Renaissance Flick Liner. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch on the award shows and kind of events thing briefly. Cause in a lot of my vlogs recently, why does it smell like something's burning? Yeah, in a lot of my vlogs recently, I feel like I've been to quite okay i can't talk and do my eyeliner at the same time yeah i've been to quite a few like cool events and things like obviously i'm super super grateful to get to go to those things um 
but at the same time I feel like sometimes you kind of have to like step back from them and just kind of think like that's not real life like obviously it's so cool and amazing to get to do those things and I'm so incredibly grateful for it but it's kind of like what I said earlier that like I feel like I'm living two separate lives and that kind of side of YouTube like the events and stuff um like they're all so cool but at the same time like I feel like it gives up this impression that YouTubers live these amazing perfect lives and sometimes I do worry that um some of the events that I go to and stuff like am as amazing as it is to go to them like I don't know I feel like it's not really that relatable for you guys because not everybody gets the chance to do that kind of thing and it's not like a, re a realistic picture of like what life is like if you get what I mean but then at the same time like I really love sharing my life with you guys and I really enjoy kind of like sharing these exciting experiences so that's why I do vlog them and stuff I will go to an event and then by the end of the event I'll kind of just be thinking like oh I just really want to be home like I want to see my parents I just want to be chilled like in my room um so yeah it's weird, like I definitely have two separate lives. I'm gonna be trying an Italian brand, which is called Divage for my mascara. I've got three different ones here. The one that I'm gonna try first is the Tube Your Lashes mascara. If this works, then that's good. If it doesn't, then I'll try one of the others. A lot of you guys are asking about like conspiracy theories and like paranormal stuff. Somebody said dermatophagia. I just wanna briefly touch on this. I've had in my YouTube description for ages, um, there's a FAQ question that says, what is wrong with your fingers? Um, and I have got the answer as dermatophagia. I think that's how you say it. Um, I think I might have taken it out of my description now, but basically when I used to do nail videos and like videos of my hands, it used to be a lot worse. I basically had this whole thing uh, throughout my life where I really badly, it's gonna sound really gross. So if you're a bit squeamish, maybe you don't listen to this part, skip ahead a couple of minutes. Um, I have a really bad habit and I know a lot of people do this of like, severely chewing the skin on my fingers um at the moment it's really not as bad as it used to be like around when I was kind of like 17 18 it was really really bad around the time of my GCSEs it was the worst it's ever been I still do it quite a lot um and on my thumb my thumb is particularly bad like I don't know can you guys see that from there I know it's kind of gross I don't want to show you close up or anything but basically I chew like all of the skin on my thumb um and uh, especially on this hand as well because this is the hand that I never really show on Instagram um, and yeah I've basically done that since I was two years old I used to chew my nails as well um, and I had the shortest stubbiest nails I would chew my nails I'd chew my skin and my fingers just look like a mess and then I was able to grow my nails when I started painting them because then when they were painted pretty and I spent time doing art on them I then didn't want to bite them because I didn't want to ruin the artwork that I'd done if that makes sense um, but I still still have this habit which is the technical term is dermatophagia is a form of like um, I think it's a, it's a form of anxiety it's kind of related to that um, and yeah I still do it and especially when I'm going through a stressful time that is when you will see that it kind of flares up a lot more but I don't really show it on camera at all so that's why a lot of people used to get confused like I don't understand I don't see anything wrong with your fingers um, but yeah that explains that then in terms of uh, Tanacon what do I think of that um, I think that Shane's video explains it very well so if you have no idea what I'm talking about then Go over to Shane Dawson's channel, I still am obsessed with him, like, he's honestly, I think in my opinion, the best YouTuber in the world. Oh, whoops, I've just got that all over the place. Yeah, I really think it sucks what happened. And I also agree with a lot of people that s that uh, reckon that there was not 20,000 people there. Judging from the videos and stuff, it literally looked like 5,000 people. It definitely didn't look like 20,000 people to me, but yeah, I think it really sucks and it's a real shame for the people that went and got really badly burnt and didn't get to meet anyone or didn't even make it inside the convention um, and I just hope that they can sort it out. I do feel bad for Tana though because obviously I know that she must be so stressed right now and I don't think it was her fault. Um, I think it was the fault of the people that kind of arranged it and like rushed everything. I watch so many conspiracy videos on YouTube, mostly ones by Shane Dawson, not gonna lie. Um, there definitely are quite a few that I believe in but I don't want to go too in depth into it. Like maybe I should do a video about that on my second channel. I'm gonna use my lipstick in the shade Fudge because I don't think I've used this in a video yet. Or have I? Maybe I have. Um, yeah, in terms of like paranormal, I don't really know 
if I believe in like ghosts and all of that stuff. I'm kind of that person that says I'm not gonna believe in ghosts until I've had like a proper encounter myself. Like so many of my friends have got cool stories about ghosts and all of that stuff. Me personally, the only thing that I've ever had happen to me happened when I was on a trip with Soap and Glory and we stayed in Devon in this like really big old creepy house. Some weird shit went on like when we stayed there. Um, and I did vlog it at the time, like as in I, I think I spoke about it in my vlog. We stayed in this old creepy mansion in the middle of nowhere. Um, the door kept like locking itself when nobody locked it, um, which was something that was really weird. Um, also, there was one point where my phone was like fully charged and I think it was me, like there was more than two people. I think it happened to three people. We were basically outside skateboarding and all of our phones just kind of like blacked out and they wouldn't turn back on. They were on like high battery. Also like the windows would rattle loads when it wasn't like windy outside. There was a weird situation with some balloons that we had one night, which actually kind of creeped me out a bit. Wait, I'm gonna have to make some space on my camera to tell this story. So one night um, we were in this tiny room, which was at the bottom of the house. We were all doing like karaoke and like having a bit of a party on this trip and the room was filled with helium balloons um and like during the night I think it was like towards the end of the night it was fine while we were all singing and stuff but I think we were watching a film we were watching something on tv and basically the balloons started kind of like moving around the room they would kind of come down to the ground really slowly and then they would like go up to the middle of the room and then they would start like traveling sideways and these like helium balloons were just doing the weirdest movements and you would kind of normally think that when a helium balloon loses its helium it would just sink to the floor but they were going like up and down and halfway and like moving from side to side and they kept going into people's faces and kind of like literally they would just gravitate they would kind of like come down from the ceiling stop halfway through the room and then travel across the room and just literally sit directly in front of people's faces which is so weird and Katie Snooks was there and she said at one point that she kind of like said in her head like grandma if that's you um like come towards me or something oh I'm getting goosebumps she was kind of like saying to herself like grandma if that's you like come towards me and then this balloon like legit like came down from the ceiling and like just came and sat in her face and they kind of kept doing it to the point where we kept having to like bat them out of the way it was really weird right okay so that was in the evening and then the next morning when we woke up bearing in mind this is a huge house the room that we were in was on the ground floor but the kitchen the room was kind of like over the here the kitchen was like on the other side of the house um and yeah when we woke up in the morning the balloons were just everywhere like they were all over the house they'd gone upstairs um even though the room was kind of like Basically the room wasn't near the stairs. It wasn't like directly under the stairs or anything, but the balloons had come out of this room and gone all over the house. They had some upstairs. I'm pretty sure um, somebody, I think it was Felicity Haywood, she opened her door and there was just a balloon, like literally a face level outside of her door as soon as she opened it, which was so weird. And then we all went downstairs for breakfast. We were eating our breakfast and talking about how weird it was that like this house was a bit creepy, about all the doors locking itself, our phones dying, these balloons, the rattling windows and stuff. Um, and yeah, we eating our breakfast talking about this story and then I kid you not as we were telling the story about the balloons like going into people's faces one of the balloons just came in through the door like wanders over to the table and just like sits in front of my face and I was like it was just very kind of like inexplainable because normally I'd think like oh it's fine you know balloons move around but the fact that they kind of like they would travel sideways and like I I don't know, and the fact that we were just telling that story and then they would cut, they came literally to the table and were just like in front of my face and like you had to bat them away. It was just really weird. Um, it was very strange. And that is the closest that I think I've been to believing in kind of like paranormal stuff. But then, yeah, I know that that's not that extreme, but I thought it was kind of an interesting story anyway. And it, it still kind of creeps me out a bit. And I think there was other things. Go and watch my Soap and Glory vlog if you're interested. I'll try and link it down below. Okay, so that is it from me. That is my chatty get ready with me. I know this video is going to be super long, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it anyway. This is my finished look. I think the only thing that I forgot to mention that I used, I used this Milani blush in Luminoso. And then for my powder, I used the Rimmel Stay Matte. This is the finished look. It's just very simple, very kind of like everyday kind of glam thing. I like how the lips match the eyes. I pretty much just wanted to do something super simple because I didn't want this to be a tutorial. It was more about like what I was talking about. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I want to tell more stories now. I've got another really weird story, which I might tell on my vlog channel, which basically a ton of YouTubers got invited on a trip that turned out to be fake. Okay, so that is it from me. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of... 
I don't know, I hope you guys kind of feel like you know me a bit better now. There's definitely like a lot of things I didn't cover in this video, but I've mentioned a lot of things in my previous Q&As. And also, yeah, if you want to get to know me a bit more like personally, I'd recommend checking out my second channel and my Twitter because I talk about a lot of stuff on there. Um, yeah, if you want me to do another one of these videos and tell some more stories and stuff, then let me know. Maybe I could like make it into a series where I just sit here and do my makeup and talk to you guys and like tell like maybe a story in the video or something. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you press the subscribe button down below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!